My name is Chico. And my name is Gino. And and we've been geeks for you know pretty much all of our lives. Yeah. I mean, we geek out about a lot of random things. Different uh, different versions of geekdom. He's a he's a comic book geek. I'm a little bit of a comic book geek yeah. as well, but I I would say that he leads in that department. But in terms of video games, I'm I'm super way more knowledgeable than you are. Now here's the thing. Now when it comes to like like geeks. You, uh, we always get into these really like heated arguments. Huge arguments. It's true. I mean, even even you know, this happens a lot when you're drinking with your friends yes. who are also you know who are also geeks. If they exactly. happen to be geeks as well, you have conversations about like how oh, what would happen if you know a ninja went up against a samurai? Or, who would beat the crap out of who? Yeah, or like the Hulk versus the Thing, or you know Batman versus Darth Vader. You know stuff exactly. like that. Like all these random things. And the the, the problem with this is you know. As being being as passionate as we are in terms of of, of geek stuff like this, um, what really happens is it's all passion and there's no knowledge that actually backs it up. And we can argue as much as we want, but there is nobody there to actually settle. That's right. The argument. So we figured, why not come up with something where you know there's actual science behind you know the the, the people that we put up against each other. So that way, we'll come up with a definite answer as a to legit who conclusion. wins a certain competition. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Speaking of legit, that's not us. <laughs> so, no, not at all. I barely, so I barely passed high school. So, we got you know. some really legit people. Yeah, like I said like scientists, NASA level scientists. Exactly. All right, we're not just talking about like you know your normal. I don't know what's a normal scientist. Like a like a, a normal like a, like a cold play scientist. <laughs> <laughs> no, like we're actual, actual scientists who who have dedicated their lives, yes. their lives into the pursuit of knowledge that improves lifestyle of people. <laughs> yeah. No, not just plain science, yeah. but like super science. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 like real science. I was like a Dragon Ball pun. No, but like no, actual no. science. Actual and science. actually for the first uh, pairing that we have, yes. it's it's very fitting because the first pairing that we're going to have, we're not going to tell you who it is just yet. That'll happen in maybe like, I don't know, 45 seconds or yeah. whatever. But uh, the first pairing that we have, it's, it's very physics based. Exactly. So we figured, of course, for something like this, we need somebody who knows physics. And who better to teach us about physics other than a NASA physicist. Exactly. Right. So Eric Dahlstrom is a physicist. You can Google NASA. him. You, you can, can Google actually, him. if you can spell his name, then you are knowledgeable and wise enough to find out what he has done in life. And we've got the D uh, helping us out. We can call him the D. The D. The doctor. Doctor D. Yeah. Doctor Dahl. Baby Dahl. No, no, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> but he will help us fix this physics question. All right. Because. For the first verses, we have Juggernaut and versus the Blob. The blob. Oh, wait, so it's not for, called and. Yeah, it's called uh, verses. I, I know, fine. <laughs> so, fine, let's do that again. So it's <laughs> Juggernaut All right. versus the Blob. Wait, that kind of feels weird because right. I'm saying the Blob, and just because I'm a little bit, you know, on the heavy side compared to you. Okay. <laughs> okay All so, right. So for the sake of this argument, for the sake of this competition, for the sake of this whole versus thing. I'm representing the blob, not for any physical similarities, no. any any coincidences like that. You know, it's 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 off the table. So um, basically, uh, you know, it's that whole concept of the immovable object versus the unstoppable, unstoppable force. force. The unstoppable force, of course, being Juggernaut. The immovable object being the, the blob. blob. Okay. Right. So before we get into the details, we need we need we need a background. Yes. Here for these two, let's talk about the two opponents. That's right. So let's start off with Juggernaut. Now, Juggernaut is basically Kane Marco as avatar of the god Cytorac right. and holder of its ruby. So, he is 6'10", uh -huh. he weighs 900 pounds. He's about like, you know, he's two inches taller than LeBron James and also like, I don't know, give or take like 700 pounds heavier. Something yes. like that. Yeah. And his strength is mystically enhanced by the Cytorac gem. Okay. Now, being mystically gifted, the limits of his stamina... So, he's, he's basically bejeweled. A little yeah. bit, a little bit. <laughs> The limits of his stamina, speed, strength are yet unproven. Many of his defeats are actually due to arrogance and not to weakness. It's more of a, a hubris. Hubris. Yeah, that's the word that I was looking for. And it is said that once he begins to move in a certain direction, no obstacle or force on earth okay, has been observed to be able to stop him. See, but that's the, the same thing can be said about the blob whenever he sees like a nice juicy hamburger. Nobody can stop him from eating that. He uh, always goes for it. That is true, though. <laughs> but you know, a hamburger, a juggernaut—not so much. Not so much. Not, not, so not much. quite <laughs> a good combination. Now, some obstacles 
like uh, many tons of rock, for example, or forces such as plasma discharged cannons. I like that word, discharge. Slow his pace considerably, <laughs> but nothing has yet stopped him from permanently advancing. All right. Okay. So now the juggernaut can shield himself. Wait, that's Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even further from injury by mentally surrounding himself with a force field. Okay. So it's not brute strength. You know, he's got a lot of mysticism going around. Right. Um, now, enveloped by his force field, the juggernaut has survived the fiery explosion of a truck transporting so, a huge quantity of oil. So he's basically an unstoppable magical force. A little bit. A little bit. Little like, bit. like he's like Doctor Strange on steroids. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like a little bit of... The, the Hulk and with Dr. a little Strange. bit of Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah. Probably now, not on the same intellect level. The Juggernaut can survive indefinitely without food, water, or oxygen. He is sustained by his mystical energies alone. But what a sad, boring life. Imagine not being able to eat. I mean, not not, not that he, he can't can, eat. He can survive without food. But he can choose food. not to eat. But that's so sad. If he doesn't eat, if he does. <laughs> but strength level, according to MarvelDictionary.com, he is as strong as Thor in that he can easily lift a hundred tons and beyond. But he is nowhere near as sexy as Chris Hemsworth is. I would have to uncomfortably agree. <laughs> but of course, it has to be said that Juggernaut has been defeated before. Of course. Now, most notably by The Hulk in The Incredible Hulk number 457, mainly because it's his comic book. It's and amazing. also you by... know all of this out of like by sheer memory. Of course. Yeah, number 457. I pulled it out number. like a rabbit from a hat. Crazy. And also by The Thor or Thor okay. in The Mighty Thor 429 also because he is the owner or the star of the company. Alright, so I'm going to give you guys a little background around the Blob since we're done talking about Juggernaut. So basically, uh, the Blob is, uh, well, his real name is Fred Dukes. Uh, yes. Very, very interesting uh, teenage life for Fred Dukes. That's when he actually developed his mutant powers at puberty, when he started touching himself. Uh, no, he, he started touching himself and then he found out, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm immovable. I can't, you know, like... It's weird. I'm I'm pushing my biceps and nothing's happening. That's that's how he started discovering that he had all these powers. <laughs> all right, no, but for real this time around, he weighs around 510 pounds or 976 pounds after further mutation. What? Talk about like a crazy weight gain. What's Imagine, up, Duke? Imagine like you know how like sometimes. <laughs> <what's> <laughs> You know how sometimes you go to a buffet and yeah. like, you gain like five pounds? This guy gains like 400 pounds, just After like that. After the mutation. That's right. So of course, his primary ability is that he binds himself to the earth at will. So whenever he wants to, he can, you know, he can, he, he remains grounded. Yeah. I love it. You know, he, yes. he he doesn't let things carry him off and, you know, it just, he, he doesn't let things get to his head. He always stays grounded no matter what kind of fame he gets. So <laughs> he basically creates this monodirectional increase of gravity beneath him, making him virtual immovable up to five feet. <laughs> so through intense concentration, the blob is actually able to extend the gravity field beneath him further than five feet. So it's even to the ground that goes under him. Yeah. So uh, the blob's skin also cannot be punctured, lacerated, frostbitten, uh, or ravaged Elsa. by any skin Elsa disease. Cannot. He's not bothered by the cold Nothing. at all, you and know? He can't be beat by Tattoo Man. Who's Tattoo Man? The, the, the super villain. Goes up and does like really nasty bad tattoos. <laughs> like no regrets. <laughs> There's no nobody out there is named Tattoo. There is, right. it's a super villain. So okay. you know this is of course due in part to the skin's great elasticity and toughness, and in part to the highly accelerated rate at which his skin cells grow and replace themselves. But his skin is somewhat less resistant to burning. You know, oh, if, okay. if the cold bothers okay. him, he can't handle the heat. Charizard uh, can be a danger. Right. <laughs> I really see Charizard going up against the blob. Why not? Right. Why not? Don't knock it. So he's also known to be able to absorb impact on his skin. So say if you shoot Hawkeye's arrows at him, uh, not only will his skin be resistant to the blow, the arrows will actually be lodged onto his skin. So he's Ooh. a little bit thick skin. So whenever people call him fat, he's like, I don't care. I don't care. So uh, his strength level, according to MarvelDictionary.com, uh, he can actually easily lift. 70 tons, but probably no more than 75. Ton, ton, so, ton. Maybe about 72.3. Yes. He can probably pull that off. Uh, a couple of notable defeats as well. Punched by the Hulk in Marvel fanfare number seven. That's horrible. That's a horrible way to go. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, how, how do you lose, man? Oh, the Hulk punched. I was punched. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, he was also defeated by Colossus in Uncanny X-Men uh, number 206. Yes. Uh, and in uh, by Magneto in Uncanny X-Men number seven. So now that we've now that we've set the grounds 
Now that you know a little bit more about both characters, okay. let's set the context of this face-off. Okay. I mean, are they doing a dance battle? Are they stuck in a disco somewhere in right. the 70s? So it's going to be like a who, what, why, where, when, how. Right. Now, when? Sometime before M Day, right. November 2005, okay. when the Blob hasn't lost his mutant powers yet. Right. And Kane Marco still has the full height of Juggernaut's power. So basically, this is their peak. This is their peak. Yeah, all right. Absolute peak of their power. Now, why? Well, you know, they're probably both curious as well. I mean, if, if I were the Blob or if you were the Juggernaut, I'd yeah. probably be like, hey, I, I wonder if you can move me. Right. Right. So basically, our objective all right. is to see what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Right. So now, now it's face-off time. So we're putting up some context. Yeah, this way, you know, we have some more um, set parameters. Yes. It's yes. it's a little bit more definitive and that way we can actually use real science yes. to back up why this person would win or why this person would lose. Okay. okay, so let's just say that they're in a fight in miles of land. Miles of land. No infrastructure. Nothing. No infrastructure, no malls, no parking lots, no nothing, no houses. Each taking a turn at each other other uh, in a duel so we can see their full strengths and limitations to see who truly wins the collision. Okay, so Juggernaut runs at the blob. All right. And the blob concentrates. You know, he binds himself to the earth All right. with a gravity extending beyond five feet. Okay. Okay. Now, when Juggernaut collides with him, All right. the blob is still bound to the earth. Now, according to Eric Dahlstrom, expert physicist and aerospace consultant, even if Juggernaut's strength was somehow limited to a hundred times. Okay. Now the blob can actually be uprooted from the ground with a collision. That or the ground will be uprooted with him, you know, an area relative to his gravitational force of five feet. So basically what will happen is, like let's just say this little guy right here. So if, if, if this is the blob charging at him, and this is the, the, the five feet of ground that he's standing on, yes. which is where he binds himself, himself to, too. when the blob charges at him, he doesn't actually move from the ground. Yeah. The ground moves along with him. Exactly. That's how strong the Juggernaut is. Yes. Oh. So basically, let's just say that he is only relatively harmed. Although uprooted and blasted away like he was when he faced off with the Hulk, does the blob actually hit back? I mean, he definitely tries. Yes. He hits with all of his superhuman strength. However, the thing is, Juggernaut also has an additional invulnerability from the Ciderac gem. Yeah. So therein lies the problem. You know, it's not it's not fair because you because know outside. As it is, he's already strong. Right, and outside of the physical strength of the Juggernaut, he has this whole mystical, mystical. like power of gem in the hologram. No, it's true thing. because he is also able to mentally surround himself with a force field. Right, which is really important when you're being bullied. You right. Know what I mean, so he is a lot less harmed than the Blob was in right. the first hit if he is even harmed at all. Because right. as it is, he's strong, but force field with that kind of strength, it's practically invulnerable. So his powers are mystically, not genetically gifted. Again, this is this is where it kind of turns unfair. Yes. Um, and you know, they're less likely to have known human limits unless the blob can actually cut off his power supply, which is basically taking away the Cytorak gem. Yeah. The juggernaut is relentlessly stronger, faster and more invulnerable. Now, the blob is immovable only if the ground he is bound to is immovable. Ooh, ooh, so let's just say that like maybe like if, if the blob were to stand on a piece of like or, or like an adamantium planet. There, exactly. Or, or a vibranium planet. Wait, but vibranium absorbs energy, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like... Let's um, stick with adamantium. Yeah, otherwise, if it's not adamantium yeah. or something that's practically indestructible, the ground would be moved with him. All right, so basically, Juggernaut is unstoppable, not just because he's superhumanly strong, I mean, which is already a big plus in his defense, uh, but, but also... because he is bedazzled. Yeah. Now, if he really wanted to move the blob, and if for some reason he couldn't, you know, uh, the first time, he could always run at him again and again and again. Like, you know, it just keeps on... keeps on... Until it breaks through, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. It's just gonna keep on happening because he doesn't run out of stamina. That's right. So according <laughs> right. to Eric Dahlstrom, okay. the original premise was reminiscent of a super massive gravitational collapse. <laughs> this is the unstoppable right. momentum versus the strong nuclear force, immovable object. Now, when a massive star collapses onto its core, like Britney Spears, circa like 2002. Or Mariah Carey. Uh, or Mariah Carey, or you Post know, uh, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> that sort of thing. If the gravity wins, it collapses into a black hole. That's right. Now, if the star mass is not large enough, 
um, the core survives as a neutron star. Right. You, and you guys know what a neutron star is, right? Of course. I mean, who doesn't know, who what, doesn't a know what a neutron star, neutron star is? Star is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in any case, there is a supernova from this collision as bright as 100 billion stars. It's like the Oscars. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy. My gosh. Evaporating nearby planets, sending shock waves throughout the galaxy. Which means like no more juggernaut, no, <laughs> no, more, no more nothing, no more nothing. It's the end of everything as we know it. Exactly. <laughs> so the collision should have resulted in you know we aren't sure what except you know just devastation of from everything, everything surrounding know. the two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if like literally they're on an adamantium planet and they crashed into each other, everything around it would just be like. What? Now, however, this has to be said. We have seen that the blob isn't actually immovable. Yeah, it's more of like a title. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's, it's more of like a ha, ha, look at me, I'm immovable. I'm immovable. But he's really kind of movable. Yeah. yeah. And he's simply immovable to conventional forces that cannot move the ground. Um, to which he is bound. Right, like let's just say, I don't know, like a, a truck or, yeah. or or maybe like a, a really strong water buffalo. Exactly. Yeah. Now, anything that is forceful enough to move the ground beneath him is by technically forceful enough to move the blob himself in a way defeating him. That's right. So, you know, for this versus showdown, we're a supposedly unstoppable, unstoppable force. Unstoppable Supposedly. That's what I... Emphasis on the supposedly. Unstoppable force meets a supposedly immovable object. The unstoppable force meets. Yay! Juggernaut! Ah, uh, well... Alright, so now that this whole, you know, scientific discussion of, of, of this, this battle is done... Yes. We have a little video that we want to show you. Now, let's hear an opinion from somebody whose opinion we are very interested in. Of course. W who better than somebody who actually draws uh, some of these uh, characters himself? So we have uh, Mr. Lionel Francis Yu. Yu! Let, let's hear yeah, what he has to say. That was a little 2000. It's me being creative and not really like, you know, analyzing the characters and their origins. I'm gonna say the blob. All right, there so I'm it. pretty sure just like Lainel, you, you have, have your, personal, your own opinions. Yeah, and you know, as, as let's face it, you know, it, it's kind of futile what we're trying to do because yeah. like no matter how much science we put into it, people will still be like, no, dude, you know, you got it all wrong. This is. But if you have any comments like that, if you have any, you know, if you feel like the blob should have won this, if you feel that the juggernaut is a little bit overrated or whatever, uh, put it on the comment section. If you have something bad to say, uh, go home. Ask your mom for some manners. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Subscribe to the channel and um, uh, that share. That way you'll get notified whenever we come up with like new videos and new stuff. That's true. Yeah. And share it. You know. Yeah. Tell your you know friends. Everyone about family. it. Oh, and also in the comment section, make sure that you also tell us who you want to see in future episodes. That's right. Who would you want us to pit against each other, and then we'll uh, you know ask somebody else more knowledgeable for sure because you know try to break it down for you yeah because that's the whole point of everything that we do here again we are trying to basically put two people against each other and we we find an expert in whatever field in that it is field and then we bring them in all right all right so that's it for versus and uh we hope to see you next episode bye bye